right, hello, this is Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff and I'm trying to escape the wind. I am doing a back camera test on the iPhone 5S back camera. It's still eight megapixels. What, I'm actually pretty happy with this camera though on the back because it seems to be doing pretty decent with low lighting. I think I've escaped the wind. So my promise to you all was that I was going to use the iPhone 5S, only the iPhone 5S, when I'm normally used to using Android. I have used iPhone in the past. That was something that I swore by for a very long time until Android got better, and then I felt that it was more of a functional computer, where I felt iPhone kind of fell short in some places. So I have been using this for an entire week. I have not touched an Android phone, although I did finish editing the review of the LG G2, and that is finally up. So here I am now giving you an update video and so far the experience has actually been pretty decent. I am liking the fingerprint scanner a lot as I had mentioned before. I know there's a lot of people talking about how people have hacked into the fingerprint reader and people are now making fun of it but I think that it's actually optimized the experience and we're probably going to be seeing it pretty soon on Android phones as well. It's not something that Apple created and it's something that we're going to be seeing on other phones. So Thanks Apple for including it first, but we're gonna see it implemented pretty well in other places as well. One thing that I'm noticing is that they still did not put continuous autofocus on the camera. I can't understand why they haven't done this. There is tap to focus, so I don't even know right now if this is in focus. I'm hoping that it is, but that's one thing that you can use, something like Filmic Pro. That's an application that I found. You can use Filmic Pro. What I ended up doing is just extending my arm and reaching my finger from behind and touching it. So let's hope that that tap to focus works properly and finds faces. But otherwise, the thing that's been bothering me is the size of the screen. I still haven't been able to get used to it. And the fact that it's not even HD, it's the, still the exact same screen as what was on the iPhone 5. Another thing is, of course, that this does not have access to a file system. There isn't one that you can actually access by yourself. So you do have to import things locally into some applications. But there are a lot of options available. I remember when I was using the iPhone 4 way back when, there was no ability to watch files like MKV files. Now there is a VLC player for iPhone, and I have been using that, and it works very, very well. One other thing that I notice is that I can't find a very good application for word processing. Yes, Apple Pages is very beautiful, blah, blah, blah. But what I'm noticing is that I'm not able to import certain documents and have it keep certain texts or fonts and also keep the insignia as well. So there are some documents that I get that I need to sign and I can't just import them as is, edit them and have all the text and everything be the same. So if somebody knows of a certain application that I can use for iPhone that I can keep the insignia in there or I can keep the seal of whatever the company it is that I am signing a document for, that would be awesome if that could be included as well. I'm going to continue using this until I get the Note 3, and then I plan on keeping this and using the Note 3 at the same time so I can use them together at the exact same time. I feel like when I get a chance to actually do the full review, it will give a more enriching experience if I can use both of them side by side. So uh, yes, I will continue to use this guy. Now I am enjoying the size of this thing. I am getting so used to having phones that are huge, like, the Z Ultra with the 6.4 inch display, but this has actually been fairly nice. The system's very smooth, although a lot of the animations are incredibly slow. So when you click on the home button, or if you try to exit certain applications, you'll see this, you'll see this icon flow, and it takes a couple of seconds to finally stop. So the experience has been pretty good so far. I do like this little phone. I'm probably gonna keep it as a pocket companion. It isn't the terrible experience that I had thought it might be. So I am pleasantly pleased at this current moment. I will continue using this and I'm going to be creating more update vlogs, but it's freezing out here and I'm gonna go inside.